And despite the lies of the Trump administration and the fossil fuel industry, all over this country and here in Vermont, we are beginning the process to transform our energy system away from fossil fuel to energy efficiency and sustainable energy. We are making progress, but we have much more to do. A hundred years ago, the great genius, Nikola Tesla, predicted that electricity could be free, that it would be free. We are moving in that direction, but we need your help. Solar now is the cheapest form of electrical generation in the world. Price of solar panels plummeted by 80% in the last decade. Iowa gets 40% of their electricity from wind. Texas is producing some of the cheapest electricity in this country from wind. We are making progress, but for the sake of our kids and our grandchildren, and I have seven beautiful grandchildren, we have got to stand up to the fossil fuel industry, this administration, and tell them that the future of our planet is more important than the short-term profits of the coal industry or the oil industry. In 1891, Nikola Tesla discovered the famous Tesla coil. That's an apparatus which converts low-frequency current into high-frequency, high-voltage current. In this machinery here, we produce a high voltage of about 200,000 volts between that and that terminal here. To show one experiment which we can perform with it, here we have a connection, a single wire connection to evacuated gas tubes here. So only one wire is connected to one side. The other terminal of the gas tube is not directly connected, and we have a wireless transmission between this terminal and that end of the tube. So the system is actually demonstrating single wire transmission of energy. Today, the Tesla coil is used in every television and radio produced, plus many other applications. Here, Nikola Tesla is holding a bulb illuminated without wires by an electromagnetic field. This is an example of the wireless transmission of electricity. Nikola Tesla, financially supported by J.P. Morgan, built the Wardenclyffe Laboratory and its famous transmitting tower in Shoreham, Long Island between 1901 and 1905. This huge landmark was 187 feet high, capped by a 68-foot copper dome which housed the magnifying transmitter. It was planned to be the first broadcast system, transmitting both signals and power without wires to any point on the globe. The huge magnifying transmitter, discharging high-frequency electricity, would turn the Earth into a gigantic dynamo which would project its electricity in unlimited amounts anywhere in the world. Tesla's concept of wireless electricity was to be used to power ocean liners, destroy warships, run industry and transportation, and send communications instantaneously all over the globe. Many newspapers and periodicals interviewed Tesla and described his new system for supplying wireless power to run all of the Earth's industry. This is the interior of Tesla's laboratory, showing a large number of machines supplied by the Westinghouse Company. Because of a dispute between Morgan and Tesla as to the final use of the tower, Morgan withdrew his funds. The financier's classic comment was, if anyone can draw on the power, where do we put the meter? The erected but incomplete tower was demolished in 1917 for wartime security reasons. The site where the Wardenclyffe Tower had stood still exists, with its 100-foot deep foundation still intact. Tesla's laboratory, designed by Stanford White in 1901, 
is today still in good condition and is graced with a bicentennial plaque. The Tesla Memorial Society is asking that the Wardenclyffe Tower site with the laboratory be proclaimed a national monument. We will never know what might have been if the Wardenclyffe wireless system became operational. Nikola Tesla patented the basic system of radio in 1896. His published schematic diagrams described all of the basic elements of the radio transmitter which was later used by Marconi. In 1896, Tesla constructed this instrument to receive radio waves. He experimented with this device and transmitted radio waves from his laboratory on South Fifth Avenue to the Gerlach Hotel at 27th Street in Manhattan. The device had a magnet which gave off intense magnetic fields up to 20,000 lines per centimeter. This radio device clearly establishes his priority in the discovery of radio. This shipboard quench spark transmitter produced by the Lowenstein Radio Company and licensed under Nikola Tesla Company patents was installed on U.S. naval vessels prior to World War I. In December 1901, Marconi established wireless communication between Britain and the United States, earning him the Nobel Prize in 1909. But much of Marconi's work was not original. In 1864, James Maxwell theorized electromagnetic waves. In 1887, Heinrich Hertz proved Maxwell's theories. Later, Sir Oliver Lodge extended the Hertz prototype system. The Brandley coherer increased the distances messages could be transmitted. The coherer was perfected by Marconi. However, the heart of radio transmission is based on four tuned circuits for transmitting and receiving. It is Tesla's original concept demonstrated in his famous lecture at the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia in 1893. The four circuits, used in two pairs, are still a fundamental part of all radio and television equipment. The United States Supreme Court in 1943 held Marconi's most important patents invalid, recognizing Tesla's more significant contribution as the inventor of radio technology. This is the photo of Tesla in the Smithsonian Institution. The photograph of the Wardenclyffe Tower commemorates his work with radio waves in the 1890s. He called it Wardenclyffe. It was comprised of a laboratory and power plant. Adjacent to it was a tremendous 187-foot tower. Power from the plant was sent to a giant Tesla coil in the tower. Underneath the tower, the inventor sank huge shafts 120 feet into the soil to transmit the electrical current into the earth. This was to be the first of many transmitters in a system that would encircle the world with wireless energy. The vast amounts of electricity necessary would come from huge hydroelectric projects. not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are that of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. Tonight's story is somewhat unique and calls for a different kind of introduction. Tonight's story on the Twilight Zone is somewhat unique and calls for a different kind of introduction.
Hey. A monster had arrived in the village. Just by using his mind, he took away the automobiles, the electricity, the machines, because they displeased him. And he moved an entire community back into the dark ages. Just by using his mind. Now I'd like to introduce you to some of the people in Peaksville, Ohio. Meet the family. This is Mr. Fremont. It's in his farmhouse that the monster resides. And this is Aunt Amy, who probably had more control over the monster in the beginning than almost anyone. But one day she forgot. She began to sing aloud. Now the monster doesn't like singing, so his mind snapped at her and turned her into the smiling, vacant thing you're looking at now. She sings no more. And you'll note that the people in Peaksville, Ohio, have to smile. They have to think happy thoughts and say happy things because once displeased, the monster can wish them into a cornfield or change them into a grotesque walking horror. This particular monster can read minds, you see. He knows every thought. He can feel every emotion. I'm the living dead, the dark ghost in your head. I heard you once said, that's why you got me trapped from me. with Michael and with my father on this subject is that they had the luxury of creating whatever reality around them they wanted to create. And he moved an entire community back into the dark ages. They could have the kinds of people who were going to go with their program or not go with their program. And if they weren't, then they could be disposed of. They have to think happy thoughts and say happy things because once displeased, the monster can wish them into a cornfield. 